Any driver who disappears from the Formula 1 grid for a season could very easily never return, especially when it's an enforced exit and they make progress lining up a pretty attractive post F1 career. Kevin Magnussen looked to be firmly in that camp of exiled F1 driver after he lost his drive at Haas at the end of 2020 because the team needed paying drivers. But with Nikita Mazepin axed between the 2022 pre-season tests, Haas needed a replacement and it turned to the same driver it had to move aside for the Russian just over a year ago. Magnussen's return comes 16 months on from his supposed final Grand Prix and just a few days before he was due to race at Sebring as part of his Chip Ganassi Racing IMSA sports car program. But Haas moved quickly to scope out his interest in a comeback. Team principal Gunter Steiner first made contact about a week ago when Magnussen was heading to the US with his family before Sebring. Magnussen decided to go to America anyway as he wasn't sure if the call would come to anything. When Magnussen got to Miami, Steiner called again and confirmed it was on. That prompted Magnussen to leave the States immediately to sort out his contracts with Ganassi and Peugeot. Neither of those deals had a clause allowing Magnussen to leave for F1, but the teams chose not to stand in his way. To that, Magnussen says he feels privileged to have worked for true racers who understood his situation. They didn't like it, but they understood. Magnussen has enjoyed his 12 months racing in America in the Cadillac badge Daytona prototype and he was preparing to be part of Peugeot's return to the Le Mans 24 hours as well. It was a welcome break from the lower midfield misery that came to define the final two years of his previous four season spell in F1 with Haas. And even Magnussen was surprised that the prospect of an F1 return appealed so much. He said, I could feel it in my stomach that I wanted to do this, I could feel it. I didn't know that I missed it that much, but when I got the opportunity, I was like, yeah. I said yes immediately. Then I thought, ah, should I have said yes? Was that clever? And very quickly, I was like, yeah, I've got to do it. It's too exciting. Magnussen has been critical of F1 in his absence. He even said he would not come back to race in the midfield. By that, he says he meant a return to the situation Haas was in back in 2020. That year, Magnussen and teammate Roman Grosjean, who had been regular points challengers for Haas in 2017 and 18, had been reduced to making up the numbers as the team's fortunes nosedived. That's the situation Magnussen had no interest in returning to. But F1's major technical rule change for 2022, Haas's renewed efforts behind the scenes and a multi-year contract were enough to make him realise he still had a big itch to scratch in F1. Magnussen said, I ran out of motivation to be running around the back. Those two years were tough. Then I went away, did some other racing, grabbed podiums, pole positions, a win, and that was all really fun. And I was enjoying it. But then Gunter called me and ruined all that. Few drivers get a second chance in F1, but this is actually Magnussen's third chance. It's easy to forget that the fresh-faced debut podium finisher who drove for McLaren in 2014 then spent 2015 on the sidelines before returning with Renault in 2016. He said, life is full of surprises and this is certainly one of the very big ones. Before we move on to why this move made sense for both sides and the impact it can have on Mick Schumacher, this is a quick thank you to everyone who has subscribed to our channel, whether you've been with us for a long time or you're one of the tens of thousands of people who have joined us in recent weeks. It's great to have you along and if you're not yet part of our team, consider hitting that button anytime so you don't miss a thing from the race. This is not as simple as Haas just going back to its old driver because it's what the team knows, it's comfortable and it's safe. Basically, it's not Williams bringing back the retiring Felipe Massa when Valtteri Bottas was poached by Mercedes for 2017. It's easy to forget Magnussen is only 29. One of his most interesting points as his F1 career came to an end was that he felt a cruel irony that he was peaking as a driver right when he had no future in the championship. There were plenty of people high up the food chain at Haas who felt Magnussen had really blossomed during the team's struggles in 2019 and 20. He developed into a driver who then didn't have the machinery to showcase his growth. Magnussen is an excellent option to bring into the fold on short notice and young enough that a multi-year deal is worthwhile. He can realistically be at this team and perform at a high level for years to come. 
It means if it does take some time for Magnussen to get back into the groove, there's still going to be plenty of scope afterwards to get results. Magnussen is not immune to the challenge of returning to F1 after time away without a proper winter or pre-season, but there are factors that certainly mitigate the effect. The familiarity of Haas is important because even though he's been out of F1 for 15 months or so now and wouldn't have done any work on the 2022 car in the simulator, he knows the team, knows their processes, knows all the people and will be very comfortable there immediately. He's in action in Bahrain this week and he slots into working with what would have been Mazepin's crew, which was actually Grosjean's side of the garage when Magnussen was last at the team. However, Magnussen says he still knows that side of the team well. There's a great deal less to learn than there would be for a new driver, and Magnussen's popular within the team as well, which will be excellent for morale, something in short supply at Haas in recent times. On and off track, Magnussen will bring good experience and act as a known quantity. He can also inform and steer development under these new rules. Once he's up to speed, Haas can count on Magnussen to score points if the car is capable of it. Magnussen can also be a really good benchmark for Mick Schumacher, who now has a teammate he can rely on to be a mentor, but also a serious competitor. Magnussen jokes that this is the first time he feels like the older driver, but he is keen to embrace the role. It will take some time to build up a rapport, but there is already a little bit of a connection there, as Schumacher was part of the Haas team on Magnussen's farewell Abu Dhabi weekend in 2020. The other key element to this is what we will learn about Schumacher. He did everything that could be asked of him in his rookie season last year, but his ultimate potential is still unclear. Schumacher was going into this season as the clear team leader, who would be hoping to drag Haas back into the midfield and point scoring contention. Now the goalposts have moved. He will still be expected to achieve those things, but he'll be doing it alongside a driver who should bring a lot to Haas. The key now is for both drivers to contend for better results than Haas has become used to in the last couple of years, and Schumacher has to be capable of reaching Magnussen's level. Mazepin didn't tick those boxes, but Magnussen does. He will be a great benchmark that will give us a much clearer idea of Schumacher's capabilities.